before I start the announcements, we need to pause and thank God for answering prayers. On behalf of the Johnsons family, I would like for everyone to know that the twins are home and safe. Praise the Lord. Don't tell me prayer doesn't change things, okay? Again, uh, the family would like to thank all who prayed for them, okay? And may God continue to bless the family. Okay, good morning, Jerusalem Baptist Church. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Fifth Sunday in the month is the time that we at Jerusalem celebrating the missionary ministry. On behalf of the missionary ministry, I would like to welcome you to our missionary day. And I would like to thank the missionaries for all the work that they continually do. The announcements. This is a reminder that the men of Jerusalem Baptist Church are asked to give $100 towards Men's Day or whatever they can give. Men's Day is in October. This is the last Sunday that the Disaster Relief Ministry will be collecting donations for Haiti. The voting results from yesterday are in. And option one was the chosen direction. Deegan, Deegan Brenda Parker would lead us in prayer, followed by selections from our praise group choir. And our preacher's no stranger for today is Reverend Tony Barris. She has been here and we are blessed to have her back to hear a word from God. Tony is a preacher, a teacher, and also a resource person that is willing to help you answer any questions within the matter for not. After the prayer from Diggonus Parker, two selections, the next voice you will hear will be that of Tony Barris. Thank you, Jerusalem Baptist Church, and may God bless you and heaven smile upon you. Stay safe and stay blessed. Amen. Good morning, Jerusalem. There's a song that says, I need you. You need me. We are all a part of God's family. It says, I won't harm you with words from my mouth. You won't harm me. So let us think about that song and go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come with humble spirits this morning on such occasion as this. Lord, we thank you for letting us survive this week. We thank you for your deliverance. We thank you for restoration. We thank you for your protection. God, we just thank you because you are a good and mighty God. The great I am. The healer. God of our salvation. Lord God, you say if we dwell in the secret place of the Most High, Lord God, that you would be with us. We ask, Lord God, that you would be with us. Send your Holy Spirit this morning. Holy Spirit, we need you. We seek your presence today. Lord God, as we worship you in spirit and truth. Even though we are in a pandemic, we still know that you are God. And without you, we would fail. Lord God, thank you for just helping us survive throughout these days, Lord God. Days that we wake up and we don't know what the day going to bring. But we trust you, Lord God. We trust that you will be with us, that you would guide us, 
that your counselor would stand beside us, walk behind us, in front of us. Even though we walk through the valley of shadow of death every day, Lord God, we thank you for being with us. We thank you for being with Jerusalem Baptist Church, for being with their families, Lord God, helping us survive throughout this pandemic. Lord God, thank you for a holy ground such as this church to go to and pray and ask you for your forgiveness, ask you to cover us under the blood of Jesus, ask you to dwell in our hearts. Lord God, we are so grateful that you are our God and there is none like you. Lord God, we bless the minister that will bring to you the songs of praise, the, the message this morning. We need a word from you. Lord God, if we don't hear from you, we don't know what we're going to do. So we are trusting in you to fill us with your spirit. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Forgive us for our many sins. Blood out of our transgressions. Lord God, send your power down upon us this morning as we listen to minister. Give us the word, Lord God, the word that we so desperately need. Lord God, thank you for your grace and your mercy in fulfilling our lives. We Rejoice in the joy of your salvation. Thank you so much for just being there for us on a daily basis. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Savior. Thank you for delivering us. Thank you for keeping us, watching over us. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. 
many of you all know that the Lord is blessing you right now? Come on, I'll hear some Lord's glory. He woke you up this morning and started you on your way. I know the Lord. I know he's blessing me. And he's blessing me right now. Amen. Amen. Come on, I have to hear some horns blowing this morning. They should be non-stop this morning. The Lord has blessed you this morning. Amen. Amen. Hey, look like I'm going to be praising the Lord by myself this morning. Come on, God is good. And he's good all the time. Amen. Amen. I bring you greetings again this morning. Uh, yes, I am no stranger, but I do bring you greetings on behalf of my pastors, Micah and Cece Jackson, who are my serve as their associate minister, serve as the clerk, and also serve as the minister of faith formation, Christian faith formation. Good morning, Jerusalem. Good morning. It's a good morning, amen. It's a good morning. Anytime you open your eyes, it's a good morning. Amen. Amen. Like get settled here. I'm going to ask you if you have your devices and have your Bible out, which you should. You should always have your word. And now that we have electronics, we can always carry the word with us everywhere we go. Amen. And if you would turn to the book of Job. I'm going to ask you to keep your Bible open to the book of Job. Let us go to God in prayer. Lord, you've been better to us than we deserve. And so, Lord, we thank you this morning. And we honor you and we bless you. We thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to gather together one more time thank you lord for the gift of your word which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path and so lord god we pray now by the moving of your holy spirit that you'll speak and make your word live for us today remember your servant preacher right now lord remember your servants who are listening today for lord we confess that we are nothing without you no one understands us no one loves us and no one cares for us like you do, Lord. So I pray now, Father, for the presence of your Holy Spirit to preach this word the way that you would have me to preach it. I pray this right now in the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. You know, I was sharing when I first came up that it, this has been a um, this has been a tough week for me. I don't know about you, but it's been a tough week, and I know that no matter what this week is going to bring, I know one thing that we ought to face it with our heads held high and our spirits filled with faith in God. Because how many of y'all know we serve a God who who takes good care of us? How many of you know we serve a God who loves us? And even when we feel like that we're alone, how many of us know that God, his presence is with us at all times? So let us go to the book of Job, book of wisdom, Old Testament. And if you go to the first chapter of Job, I'm going to read verses 1 through 10. 1 through 10. In the land of Uz, there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless and upright. Excuse me, Jerusalem, I'm reading from the New International Version. He feared God and shunned evil. He had seven sons and three daughters, and he owned 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels. 500 yoke of oxen and 500 donkeys, and had a large number of servants. He was the greatest man among all people of the East. His sons used to hold feasts in their homes on their birthdays, and they would invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. 
When a period of feasting had run its course, Job would make arrangements for them to be purified. Early in the morning, he would sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them, thinking, perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular custom. One day, the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord from roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. The Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There's no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied. Have you not put a hedge around him and his household? And everything he has, you have blessed the work of his hands, so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. If you will go to the 23rd chapter of Job. The 23rd chapter, and I'm going to read the third verse. The 23rd chapter, and just the third verse. If only I knew where to find him, if only I could go to his dwelling. If only I knew where to find him, if only I could go to his dwelling. Jerusalem, I want you to go with me and remind the pages back in the time of your life, back to a stage of your life. Maybe even you have to go back as far as your childhood where you will remember that, that time in life when there were no bills, there were no pressures, no job to go to, a stage in your life where you had no co-workers to deal with, you had no husband or wife, you had no kids. Go back in the stage of your life and think about when there was no stress and there was no worry. Go back to that time of your life and take that time right now and I want you to reflect. Some of us have to take a little bit more time than others, but I want you to think about just like Michael Jackson's song, do you remember the time? Do you remember that time when you were stress free? You had no worries. Didn't have to worry about going to work. Like I said, it could take you back to your childhood. And back in the day in 1976, Stevie Wonder released a song entitled, I Wish. And I know I got some old school folks here. And the opening verse went, looking back on when I was a nappy headed little boy. Then my only worry was for Christmas and what would be my toy. Even though we sometimes would not get a thing, we were happy with the joy the day would bring. And then the chorus would go, come on, y'all know that chorus. I wish those days could come back once more. Why did those days ever have to go? I wish those days could come back once more. Why did those days ever have to go? Because I love them so. And you know, my favorite part of that song was, and mama gives you money for Sunday school. You trade yours for candy after church is through. I wish those days could come back once more. I wish those days could come back once more. Cause I love them so. When I reflect back to those days, I can recall as a child, we all didn't have much. I know we all can remember that. We were happy to, I was just happy to get a paper bag on Christmas filled with nuts and orange or maybe an apple and several pieces of candy in Sunday school. Or oh, we got toys for Christmas, but not like the quantity and the quality of toys. Kids get electronics today. We played games that didn't require electricity, and it required a group or a group of kids. We would come together, and we would play together. We played tag. Anybody remember that? Played red light, green light. Played jack rocks. We did hopscotch. We did double dutch. We played freeze tag, and we played football and basketball. We didn't have iPads. We didn't have iPhones. We didn't have Apple Watches. And we didn't have a, a, or a ITV or whatever you call it now, MacBooks. But when, and then we also remember back in those days that when mama said she was gonna whip your behind, it was a promise that was gonna be carried through. It won't just threats like you get today, amen? 
If she said she was going to beat your butt, she meant it. She was going to beat your butt. She might have had company, and she's going to wait till that company leave. Then she's going to tell you, come here, because I got something that I promised you, and I'm going to follow through on that promise. She just didn't threaten her. I'm going to keep beating you. I'm going to beat you. I'm going to get you. I'm going to whip you. And then she forget all about it. No, back in those days, they said they were going to do it. They did it. Amen. That's the reality sometimes of our walk with God. That's our reality. There's times in life when it seems that you just can't find or feel God the way you want to or you used to. Have you ever been in that place when you just felt distant and disconnected from God? You didn't feel God move on your spirit. You didn't hear God speaking in your ear. You didn't sense God at work in your surroundings and in your life. Now, I know that this message that I'm about to preach today may not apply to everyone because some people seem to have it all together. But I'm going to tell you that this preacher right here don't. This woman right here don't. Now, you may feel like that your life is in a place where you may have strayed from the presence of God. You don't feel God like you used to and you don't see God like you should and you don't hear God like you wish you could. But for some, some of you all are here today and I know I'm guilty of it that sometimes you just go through the motions. Sometimes you feel like you're just going through the motions. And when you feel that way and when you haven't felt God, feel that God is moving in your world, did you feel that there's a distance? Has anyone ever been there? Anybody ever felt like that? Have you ever felt empty sometimes? You feel weak and, and detached and wonder where God is? Especially now in this exiled existence that we talked about previously? Have you ever come to church from the call to worship to the benediction and nothing ever moved you? Then you know what it's like to be distant and disconnected from God. I know some of us still desire the sanctuary experience, and sometimes it's hard to worship outside of those four walls here at Jerusalem. And if we can be real, have you ever, when you're praying or when someone else is praying, and in the midst of the prayer, you stop talking to God or hearing the prayer, and you start thinking and worrying about something else, or some, and then you realize you didn't say amen? You thinking about what's going to happen tomorrow, you think about what's going to happen next week, you're worried about some situation or some individual or some family member. And then before you know it, they have said amen and you didn't respond amen back. Then you know what it's like to be distant from God. Have you ever thought that you were doing the right thing in the Lord and that you were strong in the spirit and you were walking the right way. And one day you woke up and found yourself in a, in a messed up sinful situation. And you ask yourself, how in the world did I get here? How did I get to this place? Then you know what it's like to be distant from God. Well, in our text this morning, this is what Job felt like. And we're not alone in this journey. According to God's account in chapter one, Job was an honest, a person of absolute integrity. He feared God and he avoided evil. Job was a good church man, if you look at him in terms of today, and he, he walked closely with the Lord. He was someone whom the Lord could brag on. And yet out of all he been, he's been through, he cries out in chapter 23 that he longs for God. If only I knew where to find him. If only I could go to his dwelling. I just want to feel God. I just want to talk with God. I want to hear God. But so many things have been going on in my life. So many things have been going on that I woke up and found myself in a place where I found myself distant and disconnected. And couldn't sense or see or hear or feel God like I wish I could. Job goes on to testify that he knows God is real. He just can't perceive it. I know God is still on the throne. I just can't behold him. I know God still has his hand on me. But I just can't feel him the way I want to. The question is not about the reality of God. It's about your intimacy with God. It's not that you wonder if God is real. You know God is real. You know the Lord is in control. You know God is on the throne of your life. But you just don't feel that God is moving. And you don't sense God at work. And you don't hear God speak. And you don't see God's hand in the midst, especially of this worldwide crisis. And we know what those crises are. We know that right now the schools have become a political background. Fights have broken out over wearing masks in public and private spaces. 
And you, the U.S. soldiers just recently we hit, were murdered by suicide bombers while trying to help those to escape and evacuate Afghanistan, resulting in a U.S. military retaliation, retaliation and more deaths. Not to mention there are over 91 active global fires around the world and people are still succumbing globally to a deadly virus and its, vir and its variants and other diseases and evictions right now are around the corner. We know some jobs are disappearing. We know that some people are making some decisions whether to go back to work. And all you have to do to get all of this information is watch your news and read the paper, if people still read the paper, and listen to the radio. And then through all of this, you're wondering, where is God? It's not that God has distanced himself from us. It's us that has allowed things and situations in our lives that causes us to be distant and disconnected from God. That's what's happened to the children of Israel that we talked about when I was last here from in the Babylonian exile. What they did, they were so far from God's presence that the prophet Jeremiah had given them numerous warnings to repent and return back to God before the Babylonian invasion. But because they didn't listen, it was too late. Well, I've come by today to help you to understand why you don't hear God like you want, you don't feel the Lord like you want to, and why you sit in worship at home or, on, or listening to me on the radio or live, just go through the motions and never sense God's working things out for you. In my house, I have direct TV. I got tired of paying Comcast a bill that was closing the gap on beating my car payment and my house mortgage. I got satellite boxes on every TV in my home. Anyone who has satellite television knows that whenever there's a cloudy day, like today, Whenever you see lightning flashing or the thunder rolling, your streaming is subject to interruption. An interruption in the receiver signal. Oftentimes right in the middle of your favorite show or in your game, you'll get an interruption and you're like, oh my gosh. And that's frustrating, amen? You see an error message and a code on the screen and it says on my TV 771, which means your direct TV receiver is having trouble communicating with your satellite dish. Your stream connection has been compromised. You've lost your connection. Can I tell you when storms rage in your life, it can make you lose your focus, cloud your vision, cause distractions, and make you take your eyes off of Jesus, forcing you to experience a spiritual disconnection. Your vision can become scrambled. Your picture isn't clear. You don't hear anything. You find yourself frozen and not moving or doing anything. And you'll wake up and wonder, what in the world happened to me? Your connection to the Lord was compromised. Can I tell you one reason why it may be compromised? Maybe it's sometimes you're too busy. Sometimes it's due to busyness. You can connect yourself to some things and people that affect your relationship with God because everything that comes your way isn't always ordained by God. It isn't always ordained for you to do or be in the company with. You've got to learn how to say no. You are too connected sometimes to the wrong things and that can hamper your vision or that broadcast that the Lord is trying to have with you. You've got to have some spiritual discernment. You've got to spend time with the Lord to know who and what's good for you. Sometimes you have to reboot and refresh your receiver to communicate with the main source. I've got to get down on my knees and pray. Ask the Lord for forgiveness and repent. If I'm not plugged into the main source, I can't expect to get a broadcast. How do you expect to hear God if you're not plugged in? How do you expect to get anything if you're not connected to the main source? And could the problem be if that you're burdened by business? Could the next problem be you're just having a prayer poor life? Could that be your second problem? Having a poor prayer life? You will never hear, sense, or feel close to God in your world if you don't know how to spend time in prayer. Prayer is what plugs you up to God. Prayer is what keeps you connected to God. Prayer is what allows you to receive the power of God. And could that be the reason why you don't hear God or you don't feel God or you don't sense God? Is because your prayer life is poor? Could it be that your cable lines are damaged? Not plugged in all the way? Could your lines be raggedy? And that's why you don't hear God? 
People, we've got to learn how to pray, especially in times like these. And you've got to pray more than 15 minutes a day. You got problems over your head. You've got enemies all around. And what you do? Pray 15 minutes a day. Kids driving you crazy. Co-workers getting on your nerves. There's unrest, death, and violence all around you. And what do you do? Only pray 15 minutes a day. Some of us are very dedicated and devoted to our TV shows every night. You don't move for a whole hour. And certain folks not know not to call you between those hours of your favorite show. Because you've got your TV already set to what you're going to watch. You rush to get settled because you know your show is about to come on. And you're dedicated, committed, and devoted, and even motionless to your favorite show. And God says, all I get is 15 minutes out of your day. All I get is 15 minutes of prayer. How can you expect to be close to God if you can't give dedicated, committed time to God in prayer? There ought to be some moments in your life where everybody connected to you, you ought to tell them, don't call me at this hour in the morning. Don't bother me at this hour of night because this is when the Lord and I, we're plugged in right now. I've got to reboot and refresh every day because God's mercies are new and fresh every day. I can't assume that what I got yesterday will be the same for today. What I do know is that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He doesn't change, but I do. And my main source will never change, but my connection can be affected. Amen? So my challenge to you, Jerusalem, is to increase the quality and the quantity of your prayer life so that when clouds and storms arise, you won't lose heart. You won't lose your vision. You won't freeze or get stuck or scrambled about because your connection with the Lord is unsecure. In fixing the no signal error, error, you just have to check it's not right. You've got to check the input so that when you can get what you need, and most TVs now have several inputs, and there are different, different components that want to be on your screen. There's different things that want to have your attention. There's different things that want to speak to you, but you've got to choose the input that gets you what you really need and not what they want you to have. And for some of us, your life is on the wrong input. Maybe you have issues with idolatry. Maybe that's your wrong input. Anything or anyone that's connected to that that has a greater priority in your life in God, than God, that's an idol. An idol could be a she, he, it, whatever it is. If it gets more priority time than God, that's an idol. Let me give you a test. Here's a test to let you know whether you have issues with idolatry. When you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing you do when you wake up? Do you grab your phone? Do you check Facebook? Do you check your message? Do you get up out of the bed and get ready for work? Or you go upstairs and get the kids straight? Or you get yourself straight so you can go to the gym? Do you turn on your TV? Because if you do those things first, that means you have problems with idols. Your husband, your wife, your kids, your boo, they get more time than God. Then you have an idol problem. Because they get more from us and we prioritize them over our relationship with God. Not saying that you throw them to the side, but seek God first. Because they get more from us, and we prioritize our relationship with them over God, there's a problem. Let me tell you something. God is a jealous God. In the Old Testament, commandment one says, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not have any other gods before me. Jesus said in the New Testament, Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. If you want something else other than God, you can't have it. You can have it, that is, I mean. But don't expect God to be close to you. Don't expect God to hear you. Don't expect God to sense or feel you. And everything and everyone has a great, when everything and every other person has a greater priority in your life. Don't expect God to communicate with you. What you should do when you first wake up every morning is to get down on your knees. Your first thought should be to invoke and invite the presence of God to guide you, to comfort you, to shield you, to walk with you. There's something wrong when a Christian wakes up and doesn't have prayer on their mind to invite or invoke the Holy Spirit in the morning. You wouldn't have your move, you wouldn't have your being if it wasn't for the Lord. And that's the first thing you need to do when you wake up before you put your feet on the floor is to say, Lord, I thank you. 
The first thing that should come out of your heart when you awake is, Lord, I thank you for another brand new day. God, I need you today more than I needed you yesterday. God, I'm grateful that you allowed me today to come. And God, walk with me today. Talk with me today. Fill my heart with love and tell me what you want me to do today. When you wake up, the first thing you ought to do is call on the name of God. And I know the last time I was here, I said sometimes hallelujah is not the first thing on your mind when you first wake up. But you got to press your way. And you got to call on the name of God so that he can help you make it through the day. If you're in trouble and you call and you don't call on God first, that shows you where your strength is. That's where you run to for your help. Let me tell you a third thing that could be hindering your connection and your, your connection with God, and that could be doubt. You can't doubt what God can do for you. Take the limits of your faith off of God. God is able. God is able to do anything, whenever, whatever, however he chooses to do it. You've got to believe that God is able to heal you. You've got to believe that God is able to deliver you. You've got to believe that God is able to take care of you, that he will provide and he will protect you. God is able. Maybe what you need to look at is that you need to remove doubt. And maybe that's what's causing some connection problems. One thing I do know, the source is always live. And that he's never disconnected from me. How about you? If anything, I've disconnected myself. I can't tell you this and we're going to close. The bill has already been paid. So there's not, I can't say that there's no power coming through the source. And it was paid over 2,000 years ago by his son, Jesus Christ. The good news is all I have to do is confess and repent and Jesus will verify the connection and power will be restored it's already in place there's power as the song said power wonder working power in the blood of the lamb and all we have to do to establish connection is just to give our time to the Lord and your picture will unfreeze the error code will disappear and it'll be replaced with the words at the bottom of your screen saying, connection restored. How many of y'all want to know, how many of y'all know you want to keep your connection going? How many of y'all know that if I just take time, give God my first when I wake up, you know, get rid of the busyness, get rid of the doubt and strengthen your prayer life. I promise you, you won't feel that disconnect. You won't, and don't let distractions hold you from your relationship, establishing a stronger relationship with God. I promise you that if you do those very things, check yourself, like they say, before you wreck yourself. Check your connection. If it feels like God is distant and that you don't hear him, you don't feel him, you don't sense him, then check your connection. Are you placing something before God? Are you taking that time and prioritizing it more than you are God? I want you to know that God is still here. He's never gone away. He's always present. And I want you to know that God loves you and he wants to show you how much he loves you. He has so much in store for you. Don't disconnect yourself from God. He is always present. God is waiting on you. To God be the glory for great things that he's done. Amen. Amen. Perhaps you're one of those that your connection got interrupted. And you need to come back to the Lord. You know you need something. You know you need someone. And let me tell you right now, you need the Lord. Especially in times like these. When that's what the enemy is trying to do right now is distract us with all that's going on. 
One of the things that I told another church is that it's not us against them or them against us, but we got to pray for everybody. We even got to pray for our enemies because when we pray for peace for our enemies, guess what? God will give us peace. And we pray for love. God says, I, I, again, I love that marquee that Brown Grove has. Just love. And God will do the sorting out later. Just love. God will do the sorting later. Is there one that you feel disconnected? Your life just doesn't seem like it's going right? And you, I promise you that if you just give your life to the Lord, Jesus will tell him, say, his power's on. His power's on. And there are leaders that are here that are willing to take you, pray for you, work with you, and it'll help you. And I promise you, God will help you get your life together. What you may think is so bad is not nearly as bad. But let me tell you about the one who gave his life some 2,000 years ago just so that he could redeem us back in connection with our Heavenly Father. To redeem us back into a right relationship. And we were disconnected by sin. But Jesus hung up on the cross. And he had an option. He could have saved himself, but he didn't. He wanted to help get us back. He said, Father, I will go down. Even up until death. Even up until death. He, he could have come down on the cross. But because he loved us just that much. He said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. So that he could draw us back to the Father. Is there one who wants to give their life? One who might have strayed and you want to come back? If you want to be baptized and confess that I'm a sinner, saved by grace. Thank you, Lord, for grace. Thank you, Lord, for mercy. Is there one this morning? Is there one? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but through him. Is there one this morning? Amen.